we're talking strategy. And if you don't have a really good strategy, this series is going to give you the questions to facilitate your own strategic planning process. No MBA necessary. You don't even have to wear a suit. So we're at the final stage of strategic planning, which is figuring out what are going to be the projects that help us move forward. So in the previous video, we talked about the most important step, the step where you actually set your strategy, which is where you determine what are your strategic imperatives. The strategic imperatives are those guiding principles and decision criteria. They're the insights you have about how your business needs to be different from what it is today. So this video is all about the next step after strategy, which is about what are going to be our tactics. So th from the strategic imperatives, what we often find is I hear organizations that have got their kind of four strategies. And for each strategy, they then ask, what are the five tactics we're going to do for that strategy? But if you take a strategy where you have you know, maybe four strategic imperatives and five projects for each of those, all of a sudden you have 20 strategic projects which is really diluting the energy and resources of the organization across far too many things. So I take a different approach when coming up with strategic projects, and that's to take each of the strategic imperatives and say, what are some of the things we could do that would really move us forward on that imperative? So in the last video, we talked about how um, global enough was uh, a really valuable strategic imperative for a company that needed to expand beyond the U.S., but not get themselves so spread out over too many countries in a way that they couldn't afford to keep up. So global enough, you might say, okay, so what if we were really trying to move the needle on being global enough, what would we do? Well, for them, uh, immediately there became the answer of, well, we absolutely need to create um, a, a base in the UK, the most obvious place that our customers are going, where we need to be able to grow with them is into the UK. And so that means a bunch of things. A UK strategy is going to require a different data center. It's going to require a build out of um, a sales force there. It's going to require that we reprogram our software with a lot of U's and S's in words that <laughs> we haven't normally had. So there were a whole cluster of things that make this great strategic project around the beachhead in the UK. That's one great project. Um, but what we want to do is not stop at going imperative by imperative to come up with our proposed projects. Instead, it's to do that for all of them and see, are there single projects or programs that really advance us on multiple of the imperatives? That's where you're getting into the good stuff. This one activity would be so useful because it pushes us on this, this, and this. Each of these three strategies will be better off if we do this big bet project. Many years ago, I was working with a, a state-owned lottery and gaming organization, and they had imperatives around being more entertaining because they were losing to Atlantic City and Vegas. Um, but they also needed to deal with the fact that their state run and the last thing they wanted was to get more and more and more money from the same people, causing people to gamble away their rent money. So they were thinking about how do they actually diversify. They, were, they, they had a bunch of things that they were trying to accomplish. Well, one really valuable approach was to move toward internet gaming. So internet gaming could access a whole new customer base. They could make it fun and entertaining, and they had so many different platforms they could use. But at the same time, because it required login credentials, people could opt in to say, please lock me out of this, or they could set limits on you know, how much they are allowed to wager in any given day. It gave them a lot of control digitally that was much harder to have when you're talking about in-person casinos or just buying lottery tickets. So that's an idea of here's a big bet project, launching internet gaming. And it's so valuable because it's going to help us on multiple of these strategic imperatives that we have. So when you're creating your strategic projects, don't just have a scatter spray of a whole bunch of things. These are our 27 priorities. 
No, your organization can't afford to, to do that and you'll burn everybody out trying. Instead, what are the six, eight, maximum 10 big bets that your organization is going to make that are gonna move you ahead on multiple of the imperatives? That's why it matters. That's why they're useful. So that's coming up with strategic projects. Uh, the key thing I want you to remember, though, is those projects are not your strategy. Don't talk about them as if you're, they're your strategy. Simply refer to them as these are our projects, these are our big bets, these are our tactics, whatever you want. But those strategic imperatives remain the strategy. They're the guiding principles that everyone can use. And in the next and final video, I'm going to talk about how do you cascade your strategy in a way that makes sure that we don't lose people by getting stuck at the projects level, but we keep everybody pulled up to that strategic level, which is your imperatives. Okay, more on that in the next video.